And we're going to be talking today about the do's and don'ts of starting an online business. And um, I think there's a lot of good lessons that you guys are going to pick up from today's session. And this is really topical right now, obviously, because of COVID, everyone's pivoting, moving online. And there's a lot of people that were already doing online stuff, but really struggling. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But also, if you have an existing business, how do you try and move that online? Can you move that online? What are the do's and don'ts if you're getting started? So I want to jump into that today and just give you guys some insights that we picked up along the way. Um, it's probably worthwhile starting by understanding our journey with online business as well. So when I first got started in business, we weren't doing a lot online at all. You know, Primarily, our business was doing live events, and that's what I lived for. I loved putting people in a room and doing amazing two, three-day live immersion trainings over, say, 40, 50 hours. Then over time, you start to realize that if you want to make a greater impact in the world, you've got to start doing things in a more leveraged way and obviously in a more digital way. So then what we did, and this was really interesting, uh, if you're familiar with NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming or Life Coaching, you know the traditional model is get people in a room for like a week, five, 10 days, and you teach them quite boring material. And when I came into the industry, I was like, I want to shake things up. So we filmed a full three-day live training that we ran, then broke it into small micro videos, and then we put it up online, and we did it in the early days as like an online NLP certification for $99. And it went viral. Like it, we had hundreds of people every day buying this program around the world, because before that, the only way you could learn NLP was to spend five to $7,000 to go and learn from some old dude uh, in a stuffy classroom experience, and it was just really archaic. And so, you know, we had a lot of people uh, that were in the industry that didn't like us uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and of course, we had a lot of clients that started working with us. And that's really how we were able to expand so quickly. So that was our first sort of taste of it. Still, though, our main business, though, was running live events. So we just did, sort of did that on the side. Then we started doing some business coaching and consulting. We started to expand more. And then, obviously, fast forward now, we've got so many different online training programs. So we've got, I don't know, do you know how, do you know how many videos and training programs and courses and shit we've got now. It'll be in the oh, hundreds, hundreds yeah, right. in the hundreds of, of courses. And the cool part about this is that when you start creating assets in that space, you can really start to do some cool creative stuff. So we are now a fully online business because when COVID happened, we were still running live events, but then that pushed us purely digital. And we've been able to run digital summits and online trainings since then. And so now we've turned our live trainings into online trainings and it, we're going berserk. And we've expanded pretty rapidly this year. So we were originally just doing stuff in Australia and New Zealand. We had some clients that had worked with us previously around the world, but majority of our work was in Australia and New Zealand. Now we've got Australia and New Zealand and Singapore and Malaysia. We've got uh, uh, Hong Kong, Japan as like central sort of, uh, well, it's Asia Pacific. Is that, well, that's one region for us. Then we've got people in the United States, Canada and Mexico. And now as well, we've got people across Europe and the United, St uh, United Kingdom. So some really exciting stuff that's happening and the ability to reach more people, change more lives, make more money and do it digitally is really exciting. So we picked up a lot of lessons along the way. The first thing that I would encourage you to understand is that most people, when they're getting started, don't realize how big the opportunity is online. So the first thing that you've got to get clear about is create a really good quality product, like create something that's really dynamite. Because if you can do that, and if you can win at a local level, you can expand really quickly. Um, and so you want to try and design it from the very beginning to be scalable. You want to design it so that it doesn't matter where I am around the world, doesn't matter my time zone, doesn't matter maybe even my language that I can pick up on this. Now, we still only market to people that are English speaking and mostly in Western countries, with the exception of a little bit of stuff in Asia Pacific. But you want to start by just getting clear on what's my product? What am I delivering and how am I going to be able to do that in a way that is going to be scalable across regions geographically? And that really gives you a huge upside because there's a massive difference in the cost of acquiring a client in Australia as what there is in New Zealand, as what there is in Singapore, as what there is in the UK or even the US. So you can really start to create what's known as geo arbitrage with online courses and training. So you get paid in USD, but maybe you're living in Australia. And so right now that works for you in terms of a currency conversion. So my first suggestion to you in terms of what to do is get real solid in terms of what you're offering and make sure it's designed to be global from day one because it saves you making the changes later as you go. So that's number one. Number two, get really super clear on who you're building this program or this course for. If you're creating an online business, you have to understand traditional businesses have to work with a lot of people because you're geographically limited, right? So like, for example, where below us right here is a gym. 
uh, they're geographically limited because people obviously in Melbourne are not coming to Perth to train at the stadium fitness that from us downstairs. In fact, people that live even 20 minutes away are not coming to, to train at this gym. So they've got to try and appeal to as many people in this catchment area as possible. And so they become very general and not specialized. And as a result of that, they struggle to scale their business, right? On the flip side, if you have a digital business like we do upstairs here, obviously, right? We can go to anybody, but the challenge is if you take a mentality that is what they use downstairs and you take it online, you're gonna get lost because there's so many other people doing all these other things. It's just a lot of white noise. So how to stand out online is about two things. One is positioning, the second is value creation. So you've got to really get super targeted on who you're going after. And even if your product, your service, or your program is suitable for a lot of people, you've got to really nail one person. And you can do multiple people, but that's got to be done at, at one at a time. So you would have a, a, a separate funnel, separate marketing strategy and plan to attract that one specific client and scale that person globally. So now it's like, I don't need to find five people in in Perth, Western Australia, I need to find five people in Perth, five people in Sydney, five people in Melbourne, five people in Brisbane, five people in Adelaide, five people in New York, five people in Boston, five people in London, five people in Durham. So you've got now like the world's your oyster effectively, and you can really start to scale as a result of that, but you've got to get super targeted on who it is that you're wanting to work with, right? So that's number two. Number three as well is don't scale your business, even if it is global as a starting point, don't scale until you've got your local systems in place. So we find, and we've experienced this ourselves, we find that you get super excited by the opportunities that are present. And you go, cool, I'm going to target everybody in the world. And one of my mentors once said to me, he says, before you try to take over the world, why don't you try and take over a time zone? So think about your world where you live. If you're in Australia right now, great. How can I start by just scaling nationally before I scale internationally? And uh, you know what? Our family used to own a Harcourts franchise and one of their catchphrases was "Local, uh, uh, global, local, national, or global, national, local, you, right? So think about it in that way. Start with you, get you where you're going right. Start even just marketing broadly and around you in your local target market. Can you work at the kinks? Because it's easier to figure out problems in your own time zone, trust me. Then from there, can you then expand to a national footprint? And then from there, can you expand to a global footprint? But if I'm in Australia, the first place I'm going is New Zealand or Singapore or Kuala Lumpur or even Indonesia. That Don't go from here to uh, Greece because just because you've got a friend who's Greek or your family's Greek doesn't mean that you should do that, right? So start in a local area and just ge geographically expand out on the board, so to speak. And then you can pick up and implement the whole business model in another place as well. You, you need to have a bit of restraint when it comes to digital marketing. So there's some, some suggestions of things that you should do to start, to start with. And, uh, and obviously, just consider what's going to be your sales mechanism. So for some products and services, you don't need a person involved in the communication for the sale. For some of them, you can just buy them online. Obviously, Amazon does a great job of that, right? But traditionally, that's quite commoditized. And it's obviously things that people already have inherent trust in. If you're selling new things or if you're selling coaching or services that are a little bit more personal, you're going to have to have a human being involved in the process more than likely at some point or you're going to spend money. So what I always say to people when it comes to marketing and when it comes to growing your business, you either spend time or you spend money. If you don't want to speak to people, if you want to have effectively what's known as like just digital sales, so you just market your services online and people buy them and then they work with you, well, then you're going to have to pay a premium in marketing to achieve that outcome because there's no human component. There's no time. If you want to save some money in the marketing, well, then it's pretty easy. You get people booked into webinars or discovery calls or something that's more of a human component because that's going to allow you to leverage your marketing dollars more, but you're paying in time. So you've got to really consider what that trade-off is for your business model. And the, there's a lot of nuances in that. And you've really got to know your shit when it comes to digital marketing. Um, a couple of things to avoid doing. And I guess it's the same things I've already mentioned in terms of things to do, but avoid being wishy-washy in who you're working with. Avoid being general in your approach. Avoid trying to be too big too quickly. Avoid scaling your business until your economics makes sense, but also until you've got all of the, the sort of kinks ironed out of your systems and processes and technology. If your clients don't have a repeatable system where you work with a variety of people and they all get the same product, the same service, the same delivery, if you can't currently deliver that at a local level, you shouldn't do it nationally because it's going to just tear your hair out because there's so many things that are going to go differently and go wrong. And a big thing as well is please don't make the mistake of thinking that people that are in your local area are like people in a suburb over, a city over, or a country over. The reality is there's huge variations in quality of life, income, 
uh, workplace education language across countries. You really see this, for example, we do work in Singapore KL. Singapore, very wealthy, very affluent, very well educated. KL, obviously a big city in Malaysia, but there's a lot of people in Malaysia that are not as well educated, not as affluent, um, and, all, uh, and obviously as well not making as much money. So if you were to try and charge for your products and services, you've got to charge different money in Malaysia than what you do in Singapore, because Singapore can buy it, but Malaysians can't. It's just they make far less money. So it's about understanding the nuances of those local markets. I think that's also really important as well. Um, but as a starting point, deliver a great fucking experience build a community online, get people engaged and connected to what you do. Think about touch points that are gonna create moments of wow in a digital world. Also, this is a really great bonus for you guys as well. See if you can make the process tactical in some way. So yes, we're building online businesses, but that doesn't mean you, sh you can't send me stuff in the mail. You know, and I think that when you look at the physical stuff as well, that's something that we're implementing at the moment in our business. So from 2021, we'll be sending out physical gift packs. I think that's going to take it to another level because people love that tactility. People love to feel like they're part of something. Everyone loves to get mail. Like in the office at the moment, we've got all these people that keep getting mail every day. Ash just got new mail today. Even Uber Eats and stuff, people like receiving stuff. So I think if you can do that as well, that's going to take your business to another level. Uh, certainly, if there's any questions you've got around all the nuances of that, reach out and connect. Happy to support you in any way that we can, but hopefully that gives you some ideas and some insights to get you in the right direction.